Now, I am very excited to introduce Richard Cho, Head of Recruiting at Robinhood, in a conversation with Betsy Bula, an expert in remote work and talent branding here at GitLab. Distributed work completely transforms the talent game, but in wonderful ways. In the future of work we're now entering, the best people can get the jobs that are right for them, regardless of where they happen to live. Now, that's a huge boon for organizations and teams that can get it right, but to really take advantage of this opportunity, most companies will have to redesign their talent acquisition and people management systems. Richard sat down with Betsy for a fireside chat on Robinhood's processes and what they've learned. As leaders in a still evolving space, these two have plenty of insights to share. Hi everyone, I'm Betsy Beulah and welcome to our session, The Evolution of Global Talent Acquisition. I'm an all remote evangelist at GitLab and I'm honored to be sharing the stage with our speaker for this session. Richard Cho is the head of recruiting at Robinhood. So throughout the conversation, be sure to ask any questions you have for Richard um, or leave comments in the ses session chat. So we have lots of topics that we wanna ask you about today, Richard. Um, but before we get started, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Thanks, Betsy. Uh, so glad to be here, and especially talking about a topic that's so top of mind for so many uh, leaders in, in talent acquisition. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the head of recruiting currently at Robinhood. Um, I've been doing recruiting for probably over 22 years. Uh, 14 of those 22 years have been focused on hyper growth uh, companies such as Facebook and Dropbox and the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. And here I am doing it all over again at, at Robinhood. Um, currently leading an organization of about 300 spread geographically uh, in uh, across the entire United States uh, in very different geos. So this topic is something that I'm super interested in, uh, in both contributing and learning from. Awesome. And such exciting growth to experience too. Um, so tell me a little bit, um, taking a step back prior to the pandemic, was your team remote in any way at that point? It was not. Our team was 100% co-located in uh, two different uh, offices, one in Lake Mary, Florida, and the other in Menlo Park, California. Awesome. So talk to us a little bit about why Robinhood is now considering remote. Yeah, I, I think, you know, this all started when we first moved into the pandemic. Um, the company, Robinhood, wanted to research, is this something that we want to sustain coming out of the pandemic? Uh, and then all the, the massive announcements started to roll out from, you know, Google and Facebook announcing their uh, strategies. And then all the uh, companies that we compete with, uh, they started talking about their work from home strategies. And we thought, wow, if we don't actually uh, take this very seriously, it's very possible that we would miss out on some top talent. Uh, so uh, in earnest, we probably started this re uh, research over uh, over a year ago. Uh, and this is when I also reached out to GitLab's very own Darren Murph to hear how GitLab is doing this. Uh, and, and, and so it started to really lay the foundation for the direction that we're going today. That's awesome. Yeah, it's exciting to, to kind of see history being written throughout this transition. So um, let's lean into a little bit more about the recruiting side of this. So um, from your experience, what have you really seen change in recruiting with this move to embracing remote work and remote first practices? Yeah, one is just um, from a uh, from a general uh, change in landscape standpoint, what we're finding is uh, that recruiting organizations now realize that it'll be really hard to go back to uh, the traditional sense of on-site interviews where people are taking half days off of work, if not full days off of work based on commute to arrive into an office with very little guarantee that they would have an opportunity to get an offer at that particular company. So now it hadn't uh, been an issue in the past, but given that uh, both uh, that the industry is moving to a work from home um, uh, format, um, it is so much easier just to do interviews uh, over, over VC now. Uh, so that transition to creating the uh, format that, that allows uh, people to interview 
uh, really on demand from 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 their homes uh, requires you to really up level your tool set. Uh, requires you to rethink how you think about um, uh, the candidate experience. You want to differentiate yourself, differentiate yourselves uh, in that uh, virtual environment. Um, and then it also creates a ton of opportunity going away from just sort of the core things that you need to be successful. It creates a ton of opportunity for innovation, which uh, that's the area that I'm 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 most excited about. Uh, given that the virtual world starts to provide uh, a little more access uh, to things that we didn't have access to before when we when we did physical on sites. Absolutely, and and there's some exciting things happening in that innovation with with tools and some of the things that you mentioned. So uh, I'd love to hear more about that. How are you all innovating in recruiting while sort of navigating this new world and in a hybrid model, for example? Yeah, um, there 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 are things that we were uh, excited about, even just going into um, uh, this virtual environment. Uh, but now that we are, uh, you know, more reliant on them. We're starting to see that uh, these technologies offer uh, a lot more uh, utility and use case than than the intent than the intended or marketed um, feature. And so here's what I mean by that: We use a company called Carrot. Um, Carrot was always a company that um, allowed us to supplement our technical screen um, in. Uh, in ensuring that we can reserve our own engineers' time for on-site interviews, uh, and we relied heavily on them uh, to, uh, you know, conduct uh, interviews on behalf of, uh, of of Robinhood, and they've done a great job calibrating to uh, our bar. Um, but what they really offer is exactly the on-demand, anytime uh, during the day. Uh, it could even be evenings or, or mornings, depending on where they uh, where they live, um, and uh, it's really convenient for them to have a tech screen at uh, at their at their uh, most convenient time. Um, what we've seen is uh, it's it's uh, created a faster um, time to that first screen. So that's just one uh, element. When you start to offer carrot at a higher volume, it starts to open up more doors uh, for folks that maybe don't, they, they don't, they're not in particular regions uh, that we all know that tech resides or, um, it, uh, you know, so because of that, uh, because of their flexibility, we can interview literally anybody around, around the world at any time zone. Um, the second is we're now using these, uh, you know, virtual tools to conduct these interviews. In the first time ever, we have uh, the ability to be able to uh, be in the interview room uh, with individuals uh, under the premise of we would like to help to teach them to be better interviewers, uh, provide them a tool that transcribes the interview, um, and. Uh, we never had that before because there was no one sitting inside the physical interview room, uh, unless you were doing like a you know interview shadow or reverse shadow part as part of the training process. Um, we never had that opportunity, but now we could do this at scale, um, and we're uh, using a company called MetaView to help uh, with that uh, with that with that uh, premise. The innovation there also goes into as they apply their own uh, machine learning to flag opportunities where we can teach the interviewer to be more effective and compare their interviews against other interviews. It actually opens up the door for um, how uh, these uh, interviewers may or may not be able to uh, proactively detect where bias occurs. We all, we all have some sort of bias. Um, so we're really excited about the next steps that MetaView is taking in order to you know, provide uh, better insights into the interview process now that we have uh, a way to uh, be in the interview room with them uh, in the background, kind of like how we're recording this uh, interview session. There's no one sitting there with a notepad looking at you saying, oh, you know, Rich said this wrong thing. Um, it's all done in the background uh, using machines and that uh, makes it so much more seamless. So we're really excited about MetaView. And then uh, ultimately, the whiteboarding tools are getting so much better uh, that allows uh, engineers to interview from anywhere around the world. So those are the three that come come to mind, but there's a whole 
plethora of things that are coming down the pipe that I'm super excited about. That's awesome. It's it's really cool to hear about all these new tools. And I know our audience is going to appreciate those kind of actionable, um, tangible things they can look into. So, and what about, um, you know, we've talked a bit about culture and how you're sharing culture virtually. How are you all approaching that? Yeah, there. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, uh, hacky ways that we, we try to recreate the uh, environment, uh, uh, which was our best exemplar of our culture, which was our office. Uh, so we did videos, we did all, all these things. But um, moving forward, I think candidates, especially as we start to navigate um, uh, the this new virtual world, candidates will want to have access to what it's going to feel like to be in that office um, absor- uh, uh, absorbing all of that culture um, uh, while in the convenience of their homes. Um, so what we've done is we put in a lot of effort into uh, investing into our uh, various medium uh, blog posts. Uh, we've invested uh, a ton in other virtual ways in which we can um, uh, share the, uh, the environment by using videos and, and, and photos. Uh, and, um, uh, and then finally, uh, during the interview process, uh, we'll try to create a bespoke, uh, experience for that particular individual, uh, whether, uh, whether it's some sort of fancy virtual background, uh, to, um, you know, giving them a glimpse or an opportunity to speak to somebody that, uh, is within the organization to give them a day in the life of what it's like to be a Robin Hood. So those are things that we're working on. What I believe will be um, incredibly innovative is, um, you know, the, I, th- I still think it's a, it, is a, is a blank slate. Uh, but if you can give the individual uh, a, a, an experience like they were in the office, um, that's really going to be where that, uh, where, you, where that company starts to differentiate against their competitors. That's so true. It's going to be so important to be able to give those authentic experiences. And I I love that you all offer the opportunity to speak with someone who's already part of the team too, to kind of bring that to life. Um, So kind of taking a a higher level view, as far as like a system to create and get access to the best best talent pools, um, how do you sort of approach that given the remote environment? Does that change at all? Yeah. um, The cool thing is, uh, we're now seeing that more and more organizations going through this analysis um, are realizing that they can manage either a full-time remote workforce or some partial remote workforce. Um, so uh, in, in technology, you had uh, three major hubs, and then we can talk about tier two hubs, tier three, tier, tier four hubs. Um, so it's no longer required that you're within drivable or commutable driving distance to someplace in the Bay area or someplace in, uh, uh, New York city or someplace in Seattle. Um, so what you're seeing is that because of some of that flexibility, people are living further and further away from the, um, uh, people are living further and further away from the, uh, those particular, um, areas where the, where the, uh, companies reside. The other is now that teams are realizing that um, uh, uh, companies can support full-time remote workforces. Now we're starting to recruit in regions that we never thought that we would. Um, uh, and this, uh, in, in my mind, ac- absolutely opens the doors to uh, candidates that are in regions that you don't really associate tech uh, with, but they have really bright, bright um, candidates uh, that we should we should engage and now it gives them the opportunity to have access to companies like, you know, Robinhood, Facebook, Apple, Google, um, whether they live in, you know, Arkansas or, uh, you know, Illinois, it, it don't have to necessarily be concentrated in, in, the, in those hubs. Um, so uh, from a recruiting strategy standpoint, it's now putting a lot more um, focus on where are, where are these talent pools? Um, using LinkedIn's insights uh, tool allows us to see where this talent is going and residing, uh, what companies that they're that, that they're uh, going towards, and that um, really changes the game. 
Uh, it opens up the market, increases the pipeline, also puts a lot of strain on uh, companies uh, that need to uh, focus on debiasing their interview process. Um, and so as a result, uh, I think all of those things are starting to uh, really coalesce into something pretty amazing. That's, it's very cool to see how we're able to be more inclusive by opening up that talent pool. Um, so as far as when your actual team is working with candidates and having discussions with them, what ways do you kind of help them along with the decision making process and um, how might other rem remote managers better sort of understand candidates across geographies, time zones, languages, all those mm -hmm. differences? Yeah, I, really, if you do this well, you actually create a, 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 a unbiased, objective way to evaluate candidates. Now, it, it still doesn't prevent companies uh, where we uh, where you start to adjudicate ties. And so I always, this, this is actually something I say a lot. Um, having done this analysis uh, so many times, the vast majority of interview outcomes are in this category of maybe yes, maybe no. People, people are just uncertain. They, they, they think this person could be a great hire or not a great hire. It's hard for them to adjudicate um, just based on feedback alone. So then you lean heavily on where do they work? Where do they go to school? Um, uh, in, a, in a borderless uh, recruiting environment, you no longer have those things to be able to lean on to adjudicate yes or no. So it's going to force companies to be better at uh, creating those objective interview questions that give you the signal uh, that uh, allow you to have that confidence in that in that particular candidate. And I think it's a good thing. It's going to put it's going to put a lot of pressure. It's going to pressure test you know decades old interview practices that have resulted, unfortunately, in a in a highly biased uh, and uh, you know low um, diversity environments. Uh, so both of those things where we have borderless recruiting and forcing companies into thinking about uh, more objective ways to evaluate talent is really going to start to change the game uh, in helping companies become more uh, representative of the you know, talent pools that are, that, are, that are available out there. It's, it's going to be great to see that continue to, to improve as we move through this transition as well. Um, so I know we're sort of getting close to the end of our session, and I want to be able to allow time for continued questions. So before we get to that, though, I'd love to hear from you. What are your closing predictions and things that you're looking forward to seeing in the coming years? Yeah. So uh, I said this earlier, I truly believe um, that, you know, remote or hybrid remote is really the standard way of working moving forward, which uh, also what I said earlier is going to uh, really put a lot more pressure on companies to, to, to figure out in virtual interviewing environments. Uh, so how, how can you virtually share the culture of your company? How can you ensure that you have a high level of objectivity in the interview process? How can you differentiate the experience for the candidates so they're memorable so that you, you're the company that they think about when they think about the offer? Um, technology obviously is allowing people uh, to work uh, anywhere in the world um, uh, and so what candidates are going to want to know definitively is that this company is capable of managing a remote workforce in a fair, unbiased way. Um, in an environment where if I lived uh, in some state that doesn't have a concentration uh, of technology or is uh, close to the home office, that I'm not looked over for promotions, uh, that I have a thriving com uh, career. Um, but additionally, even if uh, companies can prove that, uh, candidates will want to know that you know how to communicate with me. So I'm not, I don't feel like I'm in a silo, you know, somewhere, you know, in, in parts of the U.S. Uh, that no offices reside. So those three things are going to be things that now are, uh, candidates will expect you to be able to prove beyond a reason to doubt uh, and companies that focus on on tooling and creating those uh, environments are going to be the companies that really uh, have the advantage in this in, in this ability to bring in the best talent in the world. 
Absolutely. It's, like we've said, it's exciting to see this history being written. Um, and Richard, thank you so much. We are thrilled to have you a part of Remote by GitLab today. And it was just a pleasure to have you share all these insights. Um, and we're looking forward to continuing the conversation with everyone in the chat afterwards. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Betsy. Thank you, everyone.